Hi everybody, uh, my name is Bonjour CBC and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who do know me, for those of you who do not know me, welcome, welcome, welcome to my YouTube channel, which we are still deciding what the name will be because me and YouTube have this relationship of like, um, when I get the time to do it, I do it because I really prefer quality over quantity and yeah so we are still here we are still here so which means it's going well it's going well but other than that um life just a quick life update um life has been going so well um uh spiritual growth my faith you know what Having a prayer life, like, guys, it, it takes a lot because we've got different life schedules. And, you know, we also, like, in, in my world, it's never, the day is never the same. Because I also have to, like, work in the mornings because we do this thing where we do, like, a mobile clinic thing. And, yeah, it's never the same. But... I will tell you this, even though my prayer life has that thing of being like a roller coaster of when do I get to pray, I think I still maintain the encouragement of saying, have a prayer life, journal, it's the greatest thing that you'll ever do for yourself because it helps you mentally and emotionally. Now, please don't forget to subscribe like the video and also comment down below what you think of the video and what you think about what we're talking about okay but one thing i don't want to do in this channel is that like i try and put on this persona i'm I, it's, it's like the person my partner will tell you that like because he's with me like 90 percent of the time and he will tell you it looks like this girl has got like I don't know, five personalities in one because I can be out here and just be up and about and happy and singing and dancing and then I'm just quiet. That's me, okay? <laughs> and I can be the life of a party when I'm just like there singing and dancing. But know this, I need my time to get away from people because people are not always my cup of tea like i don't want to be 24 7 with people i need to be with people for a while and get away from it now how do we get here again okay how are we here talking about bongi and have several different personalities and the youtube relationship and have faith journey okay this is how we're here so now you guys know that I've been reading the scripture and I told you guys that I'm a slow learner and if you are like me, you will read something at least like 10 times before you get it. Even a movie, I will watch a movie like at least three times because I'm trying to understand, hmm, what was the emotional state of this person when they did this and this and this. I don't like just watching it one time and being like, oh done you know because half of the time i'm listening to the conversation yeah these days i really don't watch them i just listen to the conversation to understand the emotional point of view of a person where they are emotionally and mentally now how did we get here like i told you i cannot i cannot guys move on from this scripture matthew chapter 7 Verse 6, cast not the pearls before swines. I cannot, I cannot get away from the scripture because every time, like in my morning quiet time with God, like there's like, there are like several things that he says to me about the scripture. So like, I cannot, I really cannot get away from it until like, I get the full understanding of this now 
bear with me. This is a journey. This is a faith journey thing. So, like, just walk with me and maybe you we will both begin to understand what God is saying about all these things that he teaches us because I love my morning time. That's when I get to learn from God more. That's when I get to, like, also get the courage to be me, to be fully in me and be not ashamed or afraid of being me. So that's where I get my courage from. So I really think it's something very important and something profound to have a relationship with self, with God. Now, yesterday when I uploaded the other video and I said, your struggles make your pearls. That was the first reason that I brought up that why did Jesus choose to make an example of um, of, of, of pearls and swine, you know, like, w why did he choose pearls? Why couldn't it be diamonds? Why couldn't it be, um, because uh, he was a carpenter. Why couldn't it be a table? Why couldn't it be wood? He chose pearls over everything. Now, here's another reason today. Now, if you don't know the scripture, I am reading from Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. Okay? He says over here, Give not which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Now, I told you before that, like, sorry guys, it's really cold. So I told you guys before that sometimes it's not that we're not worthy of receiving pearls. It's just that we need first to grasp the understanding, excuse me, the understanding of what God is trying to say to us before we can receive the pearls. Remember, the first video I did about the scripture was that um, God needs to first clear out everything that is, that is not going to be conducive for the seed so that the seed can grow. If you remember that video, or if you see that video, it's down below. You can just check on it. But, like, I'm, I, I, I cannot get over the scripture because... God was, uh, while I was sitting the other day, and I was reading, like, through Facebook uh, Christian channels that um, I'm in. Um, is it Christian channels? No, it's it's Christian pages that I'm in on Facebook, and people talk uh, there about, you know, they, they ask questions there. They also, um, like, they, they just talk about things encourage each other, share struggles, what they struggle with in faith, all that. And, like, there was this one post that I was reading, and the person was saying they, like, they are just done with Christianity because they don't know how to do it right. And I was like, hmm, I passed because... I didn't want to answer from a place of ignorance when I'm answering a person about something they really need help with and they could just couldn't get to the bottom of what's really happening with their Christian journey until they feel like saying that they're giving up. And then I watch a movie. I went on the next evening. I watched a movie. And in this movie, there's this guy. He takes nothing seriously. He takes literally nothing seriously, guys. And I tell you this, people will come out with their, like, sad stories and they will tell you they are sharing in this group, okay, what they are struggling with and how, the, like, I, I, and what are they trying to do about those things that they are struggling with. And every time somebody comes up with something, he's not coming out with something wise to say. He's just coming out with maybe a joke here or there. and. Like, 
he is with his Christian friends that are trying to hold each other up. And the only thing that he's coming out with every time somebody says something or they say something, well, he just comes out with a joke. It's who he is. Like from the beginning of the movie till the end of the movie, we see this guy just being like that. But then, like, now comes this moment in the movie of, of like, the confrontation moment in the movie, you know? And this confrontation moment uh, in the movie, this guy says, like, honestly, I tried finding faith. I tried. And whenever I'm honest, people think I take things for granted. Yes, I know that I joke when I say things, but then that's just the only way I know how to deal with them. And he said, so, I don't know if I can say I have found faith, I have found Christ, as others say they have. Because every time when people are saying things, I come up with a joke. No matter how serious it is, I come up with a joke. And he was just like, so I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, but this is who I am. And maybe then... Um, what did he say? Maybe then I am defeated in finding faith. I failed in finding faith. Yeah. Maybe then I failed in finding faith. And he goes on to say like, it's not that I was mocking your situation, but this is how I was looking at it from my point of view. This is maybe how I could draw strength from that. And since now it's a moment of confrontation, let me just confront it and say that, like, I don't know how to deal with pain in that gruesome mourning sort of a way. My go-to is laughter. My go-to is take it as a joke and then try to find a solution. And he said, so maybe then I failed to find faith. And this is another person. So I was watching one of the YouTubers and um, shout out to Kaylin, uh, Kyra's husband, the Edwards family. And they, they have like a podcast and they have like, you know, different channels for different things. And... Kaylin started this um, this uh, morning episode thing that he does every morning. And today he was talking about that why like YouTubers are falling off. It's because they have to maintain the persona that they are not. And now, now people think that, oh no, this person has lost their muse or they've lost their touch. And this is why now we don't feel like what they are doing or what they are putting out is good enough because now they have to maintain the the audience that they got they have to keep maintaining the same bait that they gave the audience meanwhile this person is now trying to unmask and show you who they really are and i was like hmm and then when i was doing my morning prayer god was like Girl, why my people are out here trying to change for me? I didn't ask for that. I only asked for fellowship with my people. I did not ask for you to change for me. I did not ask you to go and find a clean robe. I did not like... All I wanted was to fellowship with you. All I wanted to do was to break bread with you, commune, speak to you. Listen to what you have to say and you listen to what I have to say. 
But people are out here trying to find fancy things to show me that they are there. Trying to find fancy words to show me that they are there. That they are here with the Lord. And he was like, Let's go back to that to, to, to that scripture, to that scripture, to that verse. And I was like, okay. And I was like, one of the reasons that Jesus Christ chose pearls over anything else, he was like, pearls, pearls are made out of the DNA plus the frustrations of the oyster. You get it? They're not made from something only from outside, but they are made from the frustrations plus the DNA of that of, 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 of that which brings it together, which is an oyster. And he was like, so what am I saying to my people when I say these things? He's like, I didn't say change. I said, come to me. I will do the changing because I'm a God of process and the God of process understands that process needs to take place in order for you to change in order for some of the things to change in order for you to get your pearls there has to be process that takes place and he was like, I, I really need to say this the way he said it to me because I'm trying not to deviate from the exact message that I was given. So I was like, what, what are you saying, God? And he was like, Bongi, when I create a people and their fingerprints, fingerprints are not the same in this world. Like, nobody has got the same fingerprint as the other person. And that is for a reason. Nobody is like you. Nobody should be like you. Because that would be an imposter. Now, same thing with the DNA of the oyster and the frustrations of the oyster when they come together. He says, when, when you and me come together and you come to me with who you are, exactly who you are, changing nothing, not trying somebody else's persona, changing nothing about you, not trying something else, Coming as you are to me with your frustrations, that's when I get to work. That's when I get to show off my glory. That's when I get to show off that I am God. Because if now all is well, then why do you need me? Why do you need me as God? If all is well, if you have fixed yourself and then you bring yourself to me, why? Why do you need me then? And I said, okay. And it said, I want my people to come to me as they are. Because when their frustrations are there and they don't know what to do with themselves. That's when I get to show up. Scripture tells us that it says my strength is made greater, sufficient in your weakness. The strength is made greater and sufficient in our weakness. So now if we are trying to come with this perfection, why do you need God then? He 
you know, I really, I, I really struggle when people say change, then come to church, and I'm like, no. Jesus said, I did not come for the well. I came for the sick, the wounded. So, what does this mean? Because God tells us that his love is unconditional. It means he loves us as we are, with everything that we have, with or without our dignity, he will put it back together. Can we please stop telling people that they are not enough? That it's not good that they are not enough to come into the house of the Lord. Today I come out here as this imperfect sinner that I am because I'm imperfect I sin every day and make mistakes every day and half of it is in my mind and nobody gets to know about the demons that I deal with as a person but in my imperfections I've seen the glory of my father I've seen my father show off through me. Yeah, the clumsy one, the one that people say, you look good enough. You don't see the good in you. Today, to my brothers and sisters out there, who think they are not good enough, who think they are not worthy, who think they are not doing this Christian thing right, I say go ahead, be you, and see what God can do. Be you. He needs your DNA in order to bring out those pearls. He needs your DNA and yours alone, because only you know the mindset that it takes to go through some of these things that we go through day in, day out. He needs your DNA. So go ahead. Be you. And be you loudly. Fearlessly. Own your mistakes. It's okay to say you're sorry. It's okay to say, I didn't do it right. But I'm going to give God a chance. I'm going to pray to God that it comes out right. It's okay to do just enough and say, God, you can take over. It's okay. Christians, can we stop telling people that they are not good enough to come to their father? We've become gatekeepers instead of disciple makers. It's time we change that. Because when Jesus came, he wasn't coming for those who are already in his presence, for those who already had the privilege that they will go into heaven. He came for those who didn't even know that they qualified. Let's stop being gatekeepers and be disciple makers. Because Jesus needs those people's DNA in order to make those pearls. So from me to you, I love you. Please don't forget to subscribe, like the video, comment down below. But more than anything, if you remember anything from my lame video without the, the, the fancy noises and everything that other people have, just know this, your DNA is needed in the body of Christ to make those pearls. I 
love you. See ya.